Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna go through some of my recent comic book covers, uh, talk a little about, um, you know, what I've been working on and some of the missteps I've had. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's get to it. So this is gonna be kind of like a sketchbook tour. I'm just gonna show you guys the covers I've been working on. Uh, I like doing these covers, I've done them for a while, and I've actually sold quite a few of them. Um, these are some of the older ones that I did, and uh, I've changed quite a bit since I did this style of art, where I just did kind of outlines. As you can see in these two covers, there's a lot more black. I'm filling the page a lot more versus just a kind of an outline drawing. I actually do like this one. And one thing I'm not doing anymore, like on this one, I did a front and back. And some of you might have seen this one. Um, but I have changed, tried, learned some stuff. Uh, one thing I've, <laughs> I made the mistake of doing an ink cover on a glossy um, surface. Some of the covers are a gloss surface. And so markers are terrible on them. If you can see that, you can see the marker strokes and it smudges really bad. And actually I have a Betty Page cover that I just did and I love the drawing and I'll talk about that one, but that is a gloss cover like this one. But first I'm gonna get into this Hulk cover, um, to talk about the things I use, some things I learned, uh, <clears throat> and you know, what I like about this cover and then maybe even show you the original covers to some of these comics. Uh, which that is a super cool cover. Talk a little bit about that because you know, it's fun looking at professional art like that. So um, But anyway So with this cover, I actually used quite a bit of color on it. Um, I used several different Copic markers. I used this for his jean color and then some brown uh, I think going forward though, I want to limit the colors to maybe one, maybe two. Um, I just like the black and white look of a sketch cover as a form of art, just my preference, a little bit better than the few I did with a bunch of colors on them. Uh, one cool thing about this cover is if you see the silhouette here, that's Bruce Banner, um, you know, with his hand on his forehead, he's just defeated and the Hulk's behind him all rage with like this broken landscape behind him. Uh, just kind of showing, you know, the, I don't know, tumultuous relationship between the two. Um, as far as, you know, the drawing, like, there's some anatomical issues I had with this one uh, that I want to kind of revisit, uh, maybe in the shoulder area and stuff like that. I mean, overall, I like the way it looks, but, you know, sometimes you'll do a cover and you're like, uh, I wish I had thought that through a little bit. Um, maybe reference some bodybuilders or something like that. Because sometimes I make the mistake of relying too much um, on draw drawing from imagination. Because like this one, it's pretty much just sit down with a pencil, I'll show you guys the pencil I use. I use a little mechanical pencil to do my sketches before I start inking. And this is 6H lead. So it's really hard and it marks very lightly. And then I'll use, just uh, like a fine tip eraser for getting rid of little stuff and then this one for big stuff. So it's kind of how I make them. But anyway, uh, I overall, I feel like this is a pretty cool cover. Uh, these covers I sell in my local comic shop and then on my website as well. I haven't listed any of these new ones because I'm still kind of figuring out how I want to do this, but I want to do these a lot more. Um, I like getting my artwork out there, doing it for fun, and then making some cash on the side. So it's definitely good for that. And I've heard other artists had fairly decent success with doing these, as well as prints. So it's just, and honestly, I really have fun doing them. They're fun. Um, especially now that I kind of just have simplified it to where it's just one cover, I think of some cool creative ideas, and then start drawing, so. So this is one of the more recent covers I've done. Uh, I really like the way this one turned out. Um, what I did on this one, this again, it's limited uh, colors. So I used a couple of grays, actually not that one. N3 uh, and N2 are the two uh, Copa cover colors that I use. And you can see like through here, 
uh, on the white, you get a nice uh, value like shift and it just really helps like form um, the character. I mean, when it's just black and white, it can tend to look pretty flat. So this models it really well. I really like the way that looks. And I do that on a lot of the covers that I've recently done. And I, I feel like stylistically for these covers, I'm in a good place. I'm happy with um, what I've been doing. Now for like highlights, so see these tentacles that are kind of going around. You see these little gray marks. I've been using um, just a white uh, marker and I have a couple different ones that I've tried. I haven't really fallen in love with any of these. Um, none of them are really that great. Uh, one other thing I've used is, and I'll talk about this when I get to the Betty Page cover. This is an ink and it's really opaque. If you can see that in there. And I use just a fine brush. And as far as really getting opaque whites over the black, this has been by far the best result I've come across. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in checking out something like that, this stuff is pretty dang cool as far as, uh, you know, any mistakes you might make, you can really get rid of them with that. As where these ones, kind of you never really get back to that true white all too well uh, as far as ink pens that I'm using um, again I showed you guys this in my sketchbook tour video this is one of the pens it's interesting so this one is supposed to be like a water-based ink and then this one is a permanent ink uh, they're both brush pens let me show you the tips on both of these very similar but I feel like this one dries darker. Like whatever the difference in the ink is, this one doesn't give me that real rich black that this one does. Um, and I don't know why that is. I need to do some research on that. Uh, but I actually went over this drawing again with this marker after I had gone over this one. And I feel like I just got richer blacks. And uh, I also have this one, which is another brush pen. But this is a more watered down, water-based ink, and uh, it kind of gives you like a like a gray um, ink wash type color. But actually, I missed a spot on this one, and I'll show you how I where I would go over this, like right through here. I just like make that all gray, and I feel like having the grays with the black and white really gives you that mid tone that black and white drawings lose. I get that mid-tone when I use tone tan paper because uh, it's just the whole sheet is a mid-tone and then you go real dark and then you have a highlighter, like a white colored pencil to go real light. But with these, you really have to try and get that mid-tone in there. And I feel like the gray uh, Copic markers really help with that. Um, so this is another, this is just purely black and white or gray, like a grayscale drawing. Uh, and I really like this one. It's real simple. Uh, I know this one, a lot of people really like this one on Instagram and stuff like that. And I, I do gauge, you know, how people respond to certain drawings uh, and why. I just feel like this is just a nice cover. Um, it's framed really well. Uh, the characters, these two characters on the side are kind of creepy. And she's really en engaging um, and just unique looking, so. Uh, I do I do really like the way I did this one and again going forward with these covers sometimes I might just do a black and white cover with like some grays in it like this one uh, depending on the subject matter um, and if there's a place where like this one the the title of the comic was in black and white as well so it just made sense to not you know add colors as where this Venom comic, the title was in red and you had red up here. So I thought it'd be cool to do Spider-Man's hand, maybe around his teeth, some blood and his tongue. So carry that little bit of red throughout the whole uh, picture, which I feel like kind of tied it all together. As where this one was just fine for me being in black and white. Uh, this one's all right. There's some, so sometimes you do a drawing and everything's anatomically correct and things like that, but then you just don't like the character's face. Like, I feel like I wish I'd given him like a bigger nose. He has kind of like a, a littler nose and I don't know, the little nose just isn't manly enough for Thor. <laughs> so it was a, a situation where I would have changed just the way he looks. Like 
as a man, like if he's attractive or, you know, or not as much more like just aggressive looking. And I feel like this was just kind of the drawings fine, but the individual in the drawing was just kind of blah. So, um, but I do, I feel like this one was all right. This was, I think the second one I did right after Hulk. So, uh, this is a full color, much more rendered drawing. Um, and a lot of people really like this one as well. These ones, one thing you gotta factor in is how much time a cover takes you. Cause if you're selling these for 30 to $50 or whatever, um, you know, and you spend five hours on it is you're not making a lot of money. Um, so getting to a place where you're really happy with the covers you're producing while at the same time, you know, keeping your time to where people can actually afford to buy something from you. You know, it's, it's marketing, it's, you know, it's strategy. Um, and at the end of the day with these, I really just want to make things that I really like as well. And I did like this one. I feel like, you know, it turned out pretty cool. Uh, I definitely would have made some change. I wouldn't have done the, the text up here the way I did it with the red behind it. I was just experimenting. Um, but if you can't tell, you can kind of see there's like a reflection of the guy he's choking in his goggle. So, but that one was, I don't know, it's different. I like doing variety. I definitely think I might even do some colored pencil, like very realistic covers going forward, just to spice things up every now and again. Um, Catwoman. Uh, this one, the whole of this one I like. You have this mirror behind her. You've got Batman kind of, that's who she's engaging with. She's looking directly at you. The cats are kind of like looking at you. Um, the only issue I have with this one, I didn't really like her face very much. Everything else was all right. And then her, this arm, once I show you, you're only gonna be able to see that, is long. So when I did the original sketch for this one, um, again, I was going pretty quickly. Uh, definitely made some mistakes as far as, yeah, I should have, and my wife actually suggested something to me, which was a great idea. And she said, you should take a picture of your sketch before you go on to the inks. And so doing that, like allows you to kind of, cause you're supposed to take a step back whenever you're working on anything. And sometimes I forget to do that. But by taking a photo, taking a step back, it really shows you the errors that you might be making. So if I were you guys, I would do what I'm gonna try and do going forward. Take a picture before you move on to inks and just see if you notice anything on your phone, on your, the picture on your phone and, and then maybe move on. Cause if I had done that, I totally would have noticed some of those things I didn't like about this one. But overall, again, um, you know, it's not a bad cover. A lot of people really like this one as well. Uh, there's definitely aspects of it I really liked. I don't know if I'll ever create a piece of artwork that I'm 100% happy with. So whenever I tell you guys about flaws or things I'm not happy with, like there literally will never be a time where I'm like 100% happy with a drawing. If that ever happens, I'll probably just die right there, so. And then, so this last pay, this last cover, um, this is a gloss. So all the covers I just showed you are all glossy, or I mean all matte, and you can color on them so great, and they're beautiful to work on. They're awesome, but for whoever's doing these gloss finish, like all you can really use is sharpie on them. Like I hate them. I do not like those people, because man, I really thought this was going to be like one of my best covers ever. The pencil drawing was beautiful, I loved it. And then I start inking and I'm like, what the heck, why isn't this ink drying? Like my fingers smudged, like a big old smudge right across and I waited like five minutes. And then the, uh, a smudged right across her face. And I was like, no! So I was, I was so like just pissed. Um, so then I switched to a Sharpie for a second cause I'm like, I was just all mad. So I did the leg and Sharpie. But then I was like, okay, I'm just gonna be super careful. I'm gonna um, use some white out when I have to. So I used a brush and this white ink, opaque ink. And like, if you can see on her face, real careful, you can see the buildup of the white and on her skin and stuff like that. But I really like the concept of this. Betty Page, um, the cover. So this is the cover of Betty, like beautiful artwork. 
Um, and I wanted to kind of embrace those poses. I did a bunch of poses in my sketchbook, kind of looked at some stuff, but then I wanted to make it my own, obviously, because when somebody buys you your buys artwork, they don't want to like see somebody else's art. They want your take as an artist on it. So I'm like, okay, what if Betty Page was in a big old mech suit? So I love the concept for this one. It's just the material I was working on sucked. So anyway, and that was the same material as this one. But once I kind of got used to it, I feel like I could do, if I came across a comic with another like, gloss finish like this one, I could do an okay job just being very, very careful not to, um, you know, get my fingers on it and just also being extremely patient. One thing I, I did was I would rotate the comic based on where I was inking once I figured this out, just so that my hand was never touching any part of the comic and I really kept my distance. And I feel like going forward, if I did that again, I could do that. One thing that happens on this, these covers is the buildup of ink because it just doesn't sink down into the paper because it's got like a gloss finish on it. Um, but yeah, let's go back through real quick and check out some of these original covers that these had uh, and talk about those. Um, I don't do that enough on my channel, talk about other people's artwork. This is absolutely gorgeous, lover pose. It's funny because she's got, I actually don't like this. I don't like that they photoshopped I wonder if he did actually, or if it's drawn. It looks like a Photoshop that they put in there. Um, it just, I don't know, cause this cover I feel like is very beautiful. I love the blacks, love the pose. Uh, art is just gorgeous. So I actually don't like the Catwoman title though. Uh, as I'm a graphic designer and that title just throws me off. I don't feel like that W fits in there. They're both very like, uh, sorry, I'm getting into graphic design talk here, but uh, they're too similar for me to work together. I get what the W is, it just, I don't know, the spacing too, it's just wacky. But uh, let's check this cover out, the original cover. It's pretty cool, very simple. Sometimes Vader's face looks very like scary and masculine. And sometimes it, I feel like this one, like this one looks, not so scary. I think it's the angle of the helmet or something. He's kind of below you. That's where I always envision Vader as being way more intimidating. So you need to be kind of looking up at him. So that would be my only critique of this one. Let's check this Thor one out. I actually love the artwork in this Thor comic book. Um, it's a very unique style. Uh, who's the artist on this? Uh, Christian Ward. So Christian Ward has a very cool, unique style. It's almost like it's an amazing, it's like done with crayons, but it's got this beautiful style to it. Super colorful, really fits the Thor Ragnarok movie, like that whole theme. Um, and I, yeah, I just love how colorful it is. And he's just an amazing artist anyway. I mean, these panels, like the action, and uh, even though it's very cartoony, it's very anatomically correct. You don't always see that in comics. Uh, this one I know is a hodgepodge of different covers or uh, styles, because I think there's multiple artists that work on this. Um, but I really like that very simple purple cover. Her pose is interesting. She's kind of like bent over like she heard something. I don't know, it's not, it's cool, but it's not that, it's just kind of like you caught somebody in a moment, so it's kind of odd uh, for a cover shot. It almost looks like a panel. Let's check this Venom one out. That one's cool. I do read comics. I gravitate more towards independent, like less superhero-y comics nowadays, but I still love looking at uh, comics. That's cool, that could easily be a cover. That's really cool. Beautiful artwork on that one. I already showed you guys this one. Actually, I don't remember what this one was. 
interesting. Huh. So anyway, that's the video. I hope you guys liked watching this. Uh, like I said, it's kind of like my sketchbook tour, just focused on these comic book covers. Um, I have tons of these covers that I'm gonna be, you know, whenever I'm not sketching in my sketchbook, I'll be doing those. So hope you guys liked the video and um, yeah, thanks for watching. And tell me if you guys ever do these, like if you've ever done a comic book cover or uh, we're thinking about doing them. Uh, yeah, so anyway, again, thanks for watching and I will catch you guys later.